Good evening. Few comedic teams have ever been quite so influential as the Marx Brothers. And so today we are going to take a look at the Marx Brothers' prestigious entertainment career. In the words of Groucho Marx himself, Good evening, friends! Takes a magician to get into this coat. That's who I took from the magician. Got my finger on the trigger. The Marx Brothers' birth names were Julius, Leonard, Adolf, and Herbert. They got their start on the vaudeville stage, being trained by their mother, Minnie Marx. It was there that they developed their unique personalities. It was also there that Julius became Groucho, Leonard became Chico, Adolf became Harpo, and Herbert became Zeppo. In 1924, the brothers' uncle, Al Sheen, of the famous comedy duo Gallagher and Sheen, wrote them a Broadway play entitled Alsatias. Now, this play was not only the first Marx Brothers Broadway performance, but it also provided them with some memorable comedy bits which were later adapted into the films including, but not limited to, their famous Maury Chevalier imitations. Sure, I'm Maury Chevalier. I'll sing for you. If a nightingale could sing like you, they'd sing more better than this. Uh, never mind this. Get back in the line where you belong. Paramount Pictures discovered the Marx Brothers as they were performing their second Broadway play, The Coconuts. Paramount signed the Marx Brothers up to turn Coconuts into a film, and the Marx Brothers' first movie was released in 1929. As it turns out, the Marx Brothers ended up filming the Coconuts as they were performing their third Broadway play, Animal Crackers, which was also later turned into a movie. This was possible since Paramount Studios was located in New York rather than Hollywood, and so the Marx Brothers would film coconuts during the day and perform animal crackers during the night. Hey, mister. 1875. 1875, that's what I thought. The 1940 models run much smoother. Coconuts and animal crackers were also the debut movies for a famous Marx Brothers actress known as Margaret Dumont. Now, Margaret Dumont was the love interest for Groucho, as she was usually at the butt end of all of his insults. Margaret Dumont was so popular that she appeared in all but five of the Marx Brothers' twelve films, making her the most repeated act actor-slash-actress in the Marx Brothers' movies, who wasn't a Marx Brother herself. Now, Margaret Dumont's characters can be divided into two categories, those that simply adored Groucho, and those who, well, didn't. Pardon me, madam, but here are the seating arrangements for your final approval. Oh, no, Whitcomb. Judge Chenock will sit on my left hand, and you will sit on my right hand. How will you eat? Through a tube? The Marx Brothers ended up making three more films for Paramount, Monkey Business, Horse Feathers, and Duck Soup. Duck Soup was actually something of a financial flop, which is why it was the last of the brothers' Paramount films. Which is ironic, considering Duck Soup is only one of two Marx Brothers films that made it into the Library of Congress, the other being Night at the Opera. Now, after Duck Soup, the Marx brother Zeppo quit the comedy team due to the fact that he was constantly getting only bit parts of the films. And while that is true, he did have his moments. You're awfully glum. I was just thinking, after the boat lands, I may never see you again. Does it matter to you whether you ever see me again? I can't think of anything in the world that matters more. Mary, I'll never leave you. Although the four Marx Brothers became the three Marx Brothers, Zeppo was not completely left out of the Marx Brothers' career, as he became the Marx Brothers' financial manager. 
Meanwhile, the three Marx Brothers were taking the comedy world by storm, appearing as everything from New York Times cartoons to animated cartoons, such as those in Flip the Frog. And they did so with such unique personalities, I think we should pause a moment to take a look at these individual personalities. Here's my argument, respect immigration. Groucho was the kind of comedian who can get away with a lot. He could get away with insulting you, your wife, your mother, your father, and your entire family. And he did so by being funny about it. Even in real life, he would often insult people and they would just laugh it off and say, Oh, Groucho, to the point that it would really start to annoy him. As my partner, but he not speak, he's dumb and adult. Harpo Marx can be described as the best silent actor of the talkies era. Throughout his entire career, he never spoke a word. But he could speak volumes with nothing more than a facial expression, a taxi horn, and a harp, which he taught himself to play incorrectly, as it turns out. To tell the truth, nobody seems to notice a difference, except for the frog. Why it is requested for the benefit of those who have a retired. <laughs> Chico, the piano player of the Marx Brothers, spoke in a mock Italian accent that was developed back in his vaudeville days. Now, such accents were were in vaudeville because vaudeville was the entertainment for a lot of American immigrants, such as Italian immigrants or Jewish immigrants like the Marx Brothers themselves. In fact, Chico was actually one of the reasons that the Marx Brothers made a transition from Paramount Studios to MGM Studios. During the Marx Brothers' later Paramount years, Chico and his wife would often get together with Irving Falberg and his wife every week for a game of bridge. Irving Falberg was a producer for MGM at the time and a big-time fan of the Marx Brothers, and it was over one such bridge game that the idea for the Marx Brothers to work for MGM Studios first came about. And so, with some pushing from Irving Falberg, and some negotiating from the Marx Brothers financial manager Zeppo Marx, the Marx Brothers were launched onto the silver screen once again under the watchful eye of MGM Studios. Irving Falberg produced the Marx Brothers' first MGM movie, a Night at the Opera. To make sure that the Marx Brothers were at peak form with their jokes, he would send them on the vaudeville circuit with the movie script to perfect their jokes. Now, the Marx Brothers loved Irving Falberg. Unfortunately, he died during the production of the, their second MGM film, A Day at the Races. Falberg's death impacted the brothers so much that it seemed like they would never make movies again. However, Chico had some old gambling debts to pay off, and so the Marx Brothers took a short break from MGM Studios and moved on to RKO Radio Pictures to create a movie entitled Room Service. Now, Room Service is in an important Marx Brothers movie for two reasons. The first being... It was the first Marx Brothers movie that was not originally written for the Marx Brothers themselves. It was actually based off of a famous Broadway show at the time, and actually a lot of different movie studios were trying to make a movie out of it. Second of all, this movie was also the debut of famous actress-slash-comedian Lucille Ball, star of the famous TV show, I Love Lucy. Now, 
pardon me while I step into the closet. After room service, the Marx Brothers returned to MGM Studios to make three more movies. At the Circus, Go West, and The Big Store. The Big Store was the last of the Marx Brothers MGM movies, and so the Marx Brothers retired from the silver screen. However, the public wanted more, and so in 1946, five years after The Big Store was first produced, the, the Marx Brothers brought out the movie A Night at Casablanca. How can you fall asleep? kind of sheep, huh? How many sheep do you have to count before you fall asleep? A one? Hey, you're an insomaniac. There's an interesting story behind Night at Casablanca. When it first became pro film production, the Warner Brothers tried to sue the Marx Brothers for infringing upon the Warner Brothers movie Casablanca, to which Groucho replied, you probably have the rights to use the name Warner, but what about brothers? Professionally, we were brothers before you were. The Warner Brothers wisely dropped the suit after that. Are these your gloves? I found them in your trunk. You guys go to your rooms. I'll be down shortly. Night at Casablanca may have been the last Marx Brothers movie, but it was by no means the end of the, their entertainment career. Chico went on various musical tours, sometimes with his brother Harpo, whereas Harpo appeared on various comedy shows such as the Jack Benny Show or the Milton Berle Show, and Groucho actually got his own show, a game show that started on the radio and went on to be on television called You Bet Your Life. In fact, there was supposed to be a TV show that featured the three Marx Brothers called Deputy Seraph, in which Chico and Harpo are two good-natured angels and Groucho is their motorcycle-riding boss. However, the, sh the show's pilot never got past the filming uh, as Chico became ill. From Duck Soup's mirror scene being parodied in a Rugrats movie, to the Night at the Opera stateroom scene being parodied in The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, the Marx Brothers films have had a wide influence over comedy as we know it today. And that's the way it is. Good night. This is Operator 77B signing off. That is all.